Let's take a look at what's new in H2R Graphics version 2.8. I have a ton of features packed into this one, so here we go. First up, we have some new graphics. First one is the checklist. I can use this checklist feature to show a graphic here, add a few items, and I can imagine you using this during a show to say we're going to talk about this, we're going to talk about that, and that, and checklists through the items. There are a few settings in the theme options as well to make things look a little bit different. Next up, over on the media tab, I can actually add multiple images at a time here. So if I grab this one and select all of these, I can open them all and they all get pulled into the media tab. I've added some images here, but I could also add SVGs or GIFs or GIFs. Back over on the rundown, I can take a look at a new animated graphic, which is image with message. Now I'll leave my message as default and I'll choose one of my images here. And when I show that, you can see it shows the image and a message below it. This is a nice way to show images and messages. If I duplicate that, I can choose a different image here, jump between the two, and it gives a really nice little animation between the two images and the two messages. Let's take a look over in the variables tab here so we can look at some new features there, one of which is the ability to add more variables a lot easier. So in the past, you might have typed them in here, Sean Parker here to record, and now I can import a an CSV instead. I'm over on Google Sheets here and I'll make a quick little CSV. So I'll say the title of the person and their name here. Maybe I have uh, John who's the CEO, if I can spell. And then we have the CTO who is, um, let's just put down Sean for that. And then we have an intern who is uh, Gene. And here I can choose to download that as a CSV. It's downloaded the untitled spreadsheet, which is very helpful. And then over on the import section, I can choose that untitled spreadsheet. And you'll see here that I have my CEO, John, CTO, Sean, intern, Gene. You'll also notice up top that I have the title and name have been renamed based on the CSV. And you'll see that the other items that were already there still exist. I can just get rid of those here if I want to. Another nice little feature here is you can now reorder each of these items. So for example, I want Gene to be at the top, John to be at the bottom. Then I have them all reordered here and I can show them just like I could before. Heading back over to my rundown here, you can see a new little feature that's been added in lower thirds. If I was to change this so it's a dynamic variable here, I can say list 1.1 and I can say list 1.2 on the second line. I can close that off, show that graphic. What's interesting though, I'll just make it a little bit bigger so we can see what's happening here. What's interesting though, is that I can jump between each of the list items with these little arrows. This works well for lower thirds and I can jump up and down my variables list without jumping back over to that tab. Additionally, I've set up a new way of using variables in a list. So instead of list 1.1, I can actually say list one, row one, cell one. That lines up with the variable list over here. I can say list one, row number one and cell one. For example though, if I wanted to say the um, here, this text here, I want that to show up, I would have list one, row one, cell three. Let's try that out with list one, row one, cell three. And I have here showing up. You can use this to grab any of the pieces of data in your variables list and show it on a graphic. You'll notice over on the theme section here, we have a H2R blank, which has been added for all of your new projects. So you can use that, set it as the default. And now instead of making a very basic theme, one is included. So I'm back over on the launcher application to show a few more things in there. One is you can now delete projects. Yes, I want to delete that forever. Actually, I don't want to do that right now, but that will delete it forever. Closing that project, you can see things look a little bit different over on the launcher with a new layout for my projects. Which brings me to one of the biggest releases in this version, and that is this new cloud sync. Now this is in beta, it's in early testing, and it only really works for the data, not so much the images right now, but it's a piece of work in progress. So to get started with that, I'm over on cloud.h2r.graphics here, and you can create an account there for yourself. In the sync section, I can see all of my currently synced projects. In fact, what really matters is the credentials here. I can grab a user ID, and a token. Now there's two types of tokens here. One is for read write and the other is for read. A read write token means that the person can upload and download overwriting any of the project data here. 
And then the read version is for maybe a intern or somebody you don't trust as much just to read the project data on a third computer, on another computer. I'm gonna copy my user ID here and head back to h Graphics because in the settings here, I'm gonna to want to add those in here. So for example here, Cloud Sync, I'll paste in my user ID and then head back over and into the token read write, I'll grab that and paste that into H2R Graphics. Clicking done. There's two things I can do here then. I can decide to create a new project and sync it up to the cloud or sync down a project that I've previously synced from somewhere else. I'm gonna start by going into my Stream Day project here and setting up cloud sync on that. When I click that, you can see it's syncing, sending that data up to the cloud, and then it synced successfully. I can hit okay on that and go back to my cloud.h2r.graphics and you'll see my Stream Day project showed up in here and I can see that the project ID is there and it was latest synced today, 31st of May. As I make changes in this project, I can push those changes up and those changes will be sent to H2R Graphics Cloud. This is a good time to try out the delete function since I can delete this project and you can see now it's gone, but it still exists as a cloud project. And I can copy that project ID, head back over into H2R Graphics and in the cloud sync section down here, I can paste in that project ID and click add. What will happen now is it will sync down that project and when it's successful, I can see my stream day project is back again. You might want to set up this on your main computer where you create all these projects. And then on another computer somewhere else, you can give read only access. So if I just copy that token into h 2 graphics here and I'll paste that read only token in there, say okay, what happens now whenever I want to push up to the cloud, it tries and then it tells you your user ID and token needs to be checked. This is a good way to ensure that someone doesn't make changes to your project that shouldn't. All they can do is read that project and it will sync down to their computers. Like I said, this is very new and it's in beta, so it's something I wanna get out there, test and see how well it works. I'm still working on the images version of this, so for now, it's only pushing the uh, text data around. It's not actually pushing around any of the media just yet, but uh, that's a piece of work in progress. On the release notes, you'll see lots of other changes to this version, which are pretty important ones. So check those out and let me know if you have any issues. Thanks for watching.